Hi, this is Emmanuel Kaderi, and you are welcome to Emostel Academy. In this class, we we'll continue from where we stopped there all the time, still on the topic function and still on the course Mass 102. Now, in this class, we'll be discussing the dependent and independent variable, okay? Now, the dependent variable is a variable that depends on another variable. The independent variable is a variable that can assume any value. It doesn't just have to depend on one variable. It can just assume any value, and it's all cool. But whatever the value is that we supply for the independent variable, is what determines the value of the dependent variable. All right, in this scenario that we have here, for instance, in this first case, y, equal three, y equals 3x. The y is dependent. This y is a dependent variable, okay? In the previous class, we learned about variables, and then we discussed that variables are values that can change. Okay, and then one way to, re uh, to recognize variables is just the presence of letters, alphabetic letters, letters of the alphabet. Okay, so whenever you find letters of the alphabet in mathematics or in any calculation, they actually stand for variables. They are unknown values um, which might just be gotten along the line of the you know, equation or whatever. Sometimes we just leave them as they are in terms of expression, in form of expression, okay? But then, now let's just get back to the story. So this is the dependent variable, y, and then this is the independent variable, x. I told you it is independent because it can assume any value, but the value that x happens to be, okay, it, it doesn't matter, okay, whether this is um, a, b, c, d, or x, or y, any value, any letter can be, um, can be a variable. All right, but the dependent variable is usually the variable on the left-hand side of the equation. Usually the variable on the left-hand side of the equation. But that is not really the determinant. The determinant is the fact that whatever the value of, um, it doesn't have its own value until, um, until the other variable on the other side, the independent variable, finds an expression. When it finds um, an expression of a value, in terms of a value, for instance, when I say x is equal to 5, okay, now that we know that x is 5, we multiply that 5 by this 3 to give us 15. It means y will become 15. You get that? So if you say x is 2, then it means 2 times 3 is 6, because this coefficient is multiplying the variable. So when, if x happens to be 2, for instance, we say 2 times 3, that is 6, it means y will be equal to 6. So if x happens to be 1, it means 3 times 1, that's what, 3. Then y will be equal to 3. So whatever is it that the value of x is, is what determines what the value of y will be. And that is the reason why we say that y depends on x. So both of them are variables, but one variable depends on the other variable. So the one that depends on the other variable is called the dependent variable. The one that does not depend on anyone is the independent variable. And that is the variable that can assume any value, okay? So if you talk about this form, first one now, if you say y is equal to 3x, and then you say let x be equal to 5, okay? It means y is equal to 3 times 5, all right? So y will be equal to 3 times 5, which is 15. So which means y is 15. So if you have an ordered pair x, y, okay? Then it means um, we are going to have the value 5, 15, telling us that what x is 5, um, y is 15 when x is 5. So if, on the other hand, we just make, just say, okay, y is equal, let's, if you have y is equal to 3x, and then say let x be 2, okay? So if you put this 2 here, so y will be equal to 3 times 2, and then that's y is equal to 6, okay? So in that case, it means if you have a x and y, it implies that when x is 2, y is 6. You got that? So that is how it always works. So just telling us one variable depends on the other. The same thing as for this. Let me just quickly um, take this part off. All right. The same thing goes 
to this second one. If we have um, y is equal to 1 plus x, all right, if y is equal to 1 plus x, x here is the dependent, in the, the independent variable, okay, and then this y depends on x. So in this case, you can say y is a function of x. Here too, y is a function of x, all because it depends on x, okay? So if Emmanuel depends on Kadiri, it means that um, um, Emmanuel is a function of Kadiri, okay? So if A depends on B, it means A is a function of B because whatever B has to offer is what determines the value of A. You get that? So now, if y is equal to 1 plus x, so this is the dependent and the independent. So we say let x be equal to 4. So we can say y is equal to 1 plus 4. Okay? So y being 1 plus 4, that means y is equal to um, you know, 5. All right? So what if, uh, what if I say let x be equal to minus 1? If x is equal to minus 1, okay, then it means that instead of writing 1 plus x, I will say 1 plus minus 1. When you are introducing a number, it is a very good practice in mathematics that a number that wasn't there before, if you want to put it into an equation or um, an expression, you always keep it into bra in the bracket first. By so doing, um, it will make sure, it will ensure that some kind of mathematics a mathematical relationship will, will play between um, the, the number in the bracket, especially when it carries a sign, and then the number outside, okay? So I, I have some previous video introducing students to algebra where all of these basic things um, are explained. So you would just find the link to the video um, at the bottom of this, um, this video. All right, or you just um, go to our page and then you will see those videos there introducing algebra. So let's come back. So when we have y is equal to one plus minus one, so the very first thing you do is that you, this plus and minus, okay, they will relate because this is multiplication. Brackets indicate multiplication. So you will say plus times minus, just write this one first, then plus times minus is minus, and then you write one, okay? In mathematics, when this, when um, you say minus times minus equals plus, okay? Plus times plus equals plus. Minus times plus is minus, and then plus times minus is what? Minus. In short, when the same signs multiply or divide, the result is always plus. But when different signs multiply or divide, the result is always minus. So these are different signs. So plus times minus will give us minus, all right? So then one minus one is equal to zero. So if you have it this way, it indicates that, okay, if you compare it with the other pair x and y, it means that when x is um, minus one, y is what is zero, all right, for this particular equation. So that is just how it goes. Let's check out the last one, which is x plus y is equal to five then you might be confused there because the two of them are on the same side of the equation. No big deal, okay? So the two of them are on the same side of the equation. That is x plus y is equal to 5. Wow, no problem, okay? We still have y as the dependent variable, not because it is y, okay? If I decide to send y to the other side, then x becomes the dependent variable. You get it? Any number that is on the other side is the independent variable. Why the dependent variable is usually the number that comes before the equality. The number immediately before the equality. That is the one we take as the dependent variable. Okay, because whatever happens to the other variable over there is what determines what happens to the one before the equality. So now, um, since we've been using x as the dependent, as the independent variable all this while, I don't want to confuse you, but I'm just trying to make you understand that it can be any of the two of them, okay? Whichever one stays alone on the left-hand side before the equality, that one is the one we regard 
as the dependent variable. You can just memorize it that way and it's fine. Okay? So here we are sending x to the other side. And in mathematics, okay, whenever a value goes crosses the equality to the other side, the sign will change. So if it was a positive number before, by the time it gets to the other side, it becomes negative. But if it was a negative number before, by the time it gets to the other side, it becomes positive. So x is actually positive here. As you can see, there is nothing, no sign written. If it was a negative number, you have it as minus x. Okay? So you have y is equal to 5. Then you take this one to the other side. It goes as 5 minus x because it was positive before. But by the time it gets to the other side, it becomes negative. Okay? So now you have y equals to 5 minus x. So let's assume the question before and says um, let x be equal to maybe 3 or something. So it means you say y is equal to 5 minus 3. And then y will be equal to 2. All right? So in this case, now we we'll have the other pair that um, is indicating that when x is 3, y is 2. And then it goes that way. Okay? So this topic, um, this lesson is just to introduce you to the, to the concept of dependent and independent variable. And then also to see the reason why one variable depends on the other, to, to see how one variable depends on the other, and then the resultant effect of everything. All right, so we come to the end of this video. Um, see you in the next video where we will be talking something a little bit more technical. All right, take care. Bye.